Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in this video, we're going to be doing something different. We're actually going to be stepping foot into uh, first steps of learning how to actually deal with a proper database. So some of you may have or may have not already heard about SQL, which stands for um, Structured Query Language. So what this does is it helps us make um, different queries or requests to a database that we have going. So we're going to actually learn how to um, make requests, um, insert information, create databases and do, um, do different functions to do with databases. So pretty much interaction with databases and all that using Python. We're going to be using this information to later on create a, um, a good project like a big massive project that we haven't done on this channel before. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy this series because this video is going to be split in a few um, tutorials because there's a lot of things that you can do with SQL so I'm going to be splitting that up. So without further ado, let's begin. First of all, what you actually want to do is open up Chrome. Okay, Chrome. And then you want to type in in your tab, XAMPP download. Now what this is, is it's going to allow you to have um, PHP my admin and you could also going to have your MySQL. So MySQL is pretty much an interface that allows you to manage your databases um, with a GUI interface. So go ahead and um, go on the website for downloading XAMPP and then download the version that's suited for your system. And then once you're done installing, come back to me. So I'm going to close this off because I've already got mine installed, so I don't need to. Once you're done installing, what you'll have is something like a XAMPP control panel. So something like this. So when you type XAMPP um, and you have XAMPP control, that's what you want to click on. So I've already got a shortcut for this, so I'm just going to click on that. My shortcut is down here, so I'm going to click on that. Once you click on your XAMPP control, you should have a control panel like this opening up for you. So what you want to do is click on start Apache service. I'm not sure if we're going to need that, but just in case. And you want to also click on um, start MySQL service because that's the service we're going to be using to interact with our database and do all the stuff we want to do. Cool. So once that's done, um, what you want to do is actually open up CMD so we can do our install for the pip. So what you want to type in here is we're going to be typing in pip install. Oops, let's type that again pip install mysql which is the name of the module we're needing connector which is the class we're needing and then type in python press enter and then it will take a few seconds to install so mine already says already um requirement already satisfied that's because i've already got it installed make sure that yours installs successfully and once you're done let's start coding let me close this off now so we pretty much um, have downloaded whatever we need. We've got a Python module and we've also got MySQL server running so that we can actually interact with our database in real time. Cool. Let's open up Visual Studio Code and let's get going. So create a new file and then save and say my uh, whatever you call this file, guys, make sure you don't call it mysql.py because if you do so, you're going to have errors with your imports. So make sure you don't do that. So I'm going to call this learning SQL dot pi dot pi because it's a python file so that's the python extension let's save that up and now what we're going to do first off is actually import our sql module so import sql dot connector so we're going to import the um, connector in sql that lets us make connections to our database as mysql so what we do when we say as mysql is that we no longer need to do sql dot connector when we want to refer to this we can just type in um, we can just type in mysql so we could just do mysql dot whatever we don't need to type sql dot connector the next time we need to refer to this so that just makes it easier cool so for making first of all whenever you're using sql the first thing you want to do is actually connect your code to your database so to connect this we're going to need a few variables so let's assign host so that we actually know where the host is going to be connected to so by default, your host is going to be hosted on your localhost. So just type in localhost as your host as a string. Then you also need to provide what user you're logging in using. Um, by default, this is going to be root. So type in user equals root and speech marks. And then lastly, you need the password to your database. So your password is just going to be a blank string unless you've already set it up. So if you've set it up, type in your password in here. If it's your first time installing this um, XAM, you do not need to type in a password because it's blank by default. Cool. So we've literally got all the variables we need to log into our SQL. 
So what we're going to do first is actually try and connect to our SQL database. So, so connecting to my SQL. So this is pretty much logging into my SQL. So try and catch what we're going to be doing. Now let's create a new variable called database equals my SQL dot connect. So we're using the MySQL module and then we're using the dot connect um, class in it or the method of it. And then in there you need to specify a few arguments. So the first argument is the host, which equals to host, which is right here. Second argument is user and third is password. So we're going to type all of those up. So host equals host, user equals user, and then password equals password. So we've already have saved these um, values into variables, which is a lot easier now since we can just change it whenever we need to. So once we're done with that, we need to print connected successfully. So if this message prints out, it just means we've connected successfully without any errors. And then we also need to do an exception. So accept exception as E and then print E uh, print failed to connect. Cool. So that's that done. Um, now if everything went fine, you should have a message that says connected successfully. Now bear in mind guys, for this to work, you actually need to make sure that you have your XAMPP control and this needs to be running. So it needs to be um, on port whatever and the stop button needs to be on. If it's um, if it's not running, then it's not. this is not going to work. So make sure you have Apache and MySQL running. So I'm going to run this now and moments of truth. Uh, what does it say? No module named SQL. Okay, so what I did wrong here is I need to type in MySQL. So I got a bit excited there, I forgot to type in my. So it's import mysql.connector because the name of the module is mysql. I forgot about that. Uh, let's run this now and hopefully we should have no errors. So as you see right here, we have a message that says connected successfully. That's because we have provided the right host, the right user and the right password. Now let's go ahead and mess this up. Let's type in something like root e. Um, now when I run this, it should return an error saying it couldn't. So it said failed to connect and the error was access denied for root e at localhost using password no, which pretty much means there has been an um, error in the authentication for the user. So our catch and accept statement is working fine. So let's save this up as it was before so that it works fine. Now that's one bit, this is always how you're going to be connected to your SQL database in the start. Now let's talk about how we could actually create a database. So create, uh, creating a database. So what we need to do to create a database is another try and accept because just in case it's a good practice as well. Now we need a command handler object that we're going to be assigning a cursor to. So command handler equals database which is our sql object that has already been connected and authenticated and everything so this object right here we're going to be using that and then we're going to be using dot cursor now we have used command handler as a variable right here to make it easier since we don't have to keep typing database dot cursor on and on again now it's all saved in this command handler variable right here so what we're going to do with that is type in command handler dot execute um, and this is where you're going to be typing a query. So this obviously is SQL, which means it's a query language. We need to type a query to the database. So a query is going to be create data database and the name of the database. So this is going to be about cars. So I'm going to type in cars. So we're telling the SQ my SQL that we want to create a database called cars. Cool. And then we are executing that command using the cursor that we assigned before. And obviously this is all happening because our connection has been successful. If the connection wasn't successful, this will this would error as well because there's no login session initialized. Cool. So once that's done, we'll say cars database has been created. And then we are going to do accept exception as E print um, could not create database and then we're going to print y so the exception cool so let's go ahead and actually run this and as you see right here it says connected successfully which was the first lines of code we learned how to connect to mysql and then it says cars database has been created so the database has been created now you might say oh how do i know if it's actually created now thankfully um zamp has a gui version of this so that we can actually check what's going on 
So if you go back to your XAMPP control panel, click on, um, go down to MySQL and click on the admin tab for MySQL. So when you click on that, it's going to open a browser window and it's going to take a few moments to load. So let's close this off. Once it's done loading, it should show us all the available database, all the available databases that we have. Now, if you see right here, we have a database. Let me zoom in a bit. So if you see right here, we have a database called cars, which we literally just created using our Python script. So we're using Python to interact with this PHP MyAdmin or MySQL interface right here to do stuff with our databases. So we've just created a cars database right here. We can go ahead and add tables to it in a moment as well. So what happens if I try to run this command again, you might say. So let's try running it again. It would say could not create database, can't create database cars because database already exists, which makes sense because we can't recreate the same database that already exists. It's just against the rules. So we have now learned also how to create a database. Let's move forward. So you might want to also view all the databases that already exist on your MySQL. So this is pretty much command line and how you should learn to do stuff instead of having to do it through the GUI. So try and catch again. So try um, command handler dot execute. Okay. Command handler dot execute. And we're going to execute a query to actually show databases. So show databases. So this right here is the language that SQL understands. It's a query that we're making to the database. So it should understand that and return the relevant results, which is going to be stored in command handler. Cool. Now that we're done with that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to need a for loop to actually view all the databases because we can't just view it in one go. So we're going to do for database in command handler. So for database in command handler, print database. So for each database that is returned and stored in command handler, we're going to print that database out. And then we're going to say up here, print. These are the available databases. Cool. So we're going to use an exception statement down here, just in case, except exception as E and then print um, could not show all bases and then we're going to print E which is going to be the error that just happened. Cool. Let's go ahead and try this out. So when I run this and pretty neatly it's done it right here. It says these are the available databases, cars, epos, information schema, inventory, MySQL, performance schema, PHP, MyAdmin and blah blah blah. So it's pretty much shown us all the databases that exist. Now we can confirm this by going into the GUI version that was open in my browser right here. And as you see, it's literally shown us all the databases that are right here. So it's working fine. Now let's move on. Let's close this off. These are now three things that you've learned how to make a connection, how to create a database and how to view databases that already exist. Now, what we're going to try to do is instead of connecting to MySQL, we're going to try and connect to a database that already exists because right now the actions that we're um, doing are based on MySQL. We're not actually connected to any database if you see because we're only connected to the MySQL through here. We could also connect to a database like a specific database and then um, perform actions to that. So let me try and show you what I mean. So to connect to an existing database, let's just go down here. Uh, connecting to an existing database. Now, if you remember, the database we created was called cars. So we're going to try and connect to cars now. So we've got to do the same thing again. Database one this time because it's a new database equals mysql.connect host equals host because that doesn't change. User equals user because that doesn't change either. So um, does the password doesn't change either. Now only we need to add an extra uh, argument in here called database, which is going to be equals to cars because we want to connect to our database called cars using uh, instead of just connecting to the MySQL general um, interface. So that should do that. And then if it connects successfully, let's do a try and catch here as well, because why not print connected to cars database and then accept exception as e print could not connect to cars database and then print exception cool 
So the only reason the exception should happen is either because we have entered the wrong um, login details or that this database clearly doesn't exist, but we shouldn't have an exception anyway. Let's try running this to see if we can actually connect to an existing database. Run it. Um, let's scroll up. And as you see, we have a message saying connected to cars database. Now, as I said, the exception should occur if we type typing in a database that doesn't exist or a wrong password. So if I type in an extra S in here and then run it, it shouldn't allow me to connect. It should say could not connect to cars database and we have an error unknown database cars because that doesn't exist. Cool. So let's revert that back to the right version of it. And that's how you connect to an existing database. Cool. So we're learning a lot now. So try and catch up with me and I would recommend practicing this as soon as you're done. We're also going to be using all of this to actually create a big project as I said in the start, so don't worry about that. If you could practice this, that would be amazing for yourself though. So now that we've learned how to actually log in into an existing database, we can go ahead and learn how to create tables in a database. So creating tables in a, in a database. So at the moment, the database one variable is logged into our database called cars. So we're going to be using that to create a table in there. So a table pretty much stores information in, uh, in the form of different fields. Let me show you an example. So I'm going to go to my GUI version right here and I'm going to go to an ePost database, which is an, a restaurant system that I created a while ago. So in here, when I click on it, it shows me the available table. So I have a table for menu, I have a table for orders and I have a table for menu categories. So the table for menu stores the different items that I'm selling. So if I click on it, I have different, so this is my table for menu, and this is all stored in my ePost database. So in my menu um, table, I've stored a column for ID, I've got a column for category, I've got a column for item name, and I've got a column for price and item type. So this is the way we're gonna be going about our cars um, database as well. So if I click on cars right now, obviously we haven't added any tables to it, so it's empty, so it says no tables found in database. So that's exactly what we're about to do. So we're going to be adding a table in there for um, based on models. So we're going to create a table for the car Ford. And then in there, we're going to specify the different um, versions of Ford that exist and the different engine sizes and all that. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we need to do now is do, 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 try. And then we need to assign command handler again, because now we are using database one, remember? The command handler we have previously assigned is stuck on database, which is only MySQL. But now we've logged in into our actual database called cars. So we use database one dot cursor to literally go ahead and update the command handler to be using the right cursor for the right database now. Cool. So now what we want to do is go ahead and execute a query. So command handler dot execute and this is going to be our query so we need to type in create table this is um, sql language and then the name of the table as i said the name of my table is going to be ford because it's um, uh, the different models of ford and then we need brackets in here so in the brackets you're going to specify what fields you want so the first field you always want to add in every table is an id which pretty much auto increments. So every time a new record is added, this ID should automatically increment by one. So you do this by typing an ID, then you type in int because that's the variable type. So the file type is integer, and then you want it to auto increment. So these are all keywords that are understood by SQL. And you need to say that this is going to be our primary key, which means the identifier for all our information. So unique identifier. Now you can use a comma to specify other fields that you want to have in this table too. So I've got an ID field. I want a name field for the name of the car and the type for this name field is going to be a var uh, variable character, which is fine. And then the length for this uh, variable character is just like um, a string. So we're going to use that and we need to specify um, how many the length of the string. So 255 characters, which is the max you can use. I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to use another comma because I want another um, column in there. So I'm going to have another one called engine size. Try not to leave spaces, just use underscores if you can. And then I'm going to use uh, wildcard um, variable character brackets 255 just so that I can go with the max size again. Cool. So once that's completed, make sure you have um, your 
syntax like mine, you should have a speech mark and a closing bracket and all of this as well. So what you want to do next is actually print. Okay, sorry for the caps table created successfully. Cool. So if the table has actually created successfully, that will come up and we need to accept exception as E and then do the rest just in case an error happens. Print table uh, could not be created and then we print the exception that's going to happen. So print exception. Cool. So fingers crossed this should work in the first time. So let's go ahead and run this. Um, let's see, I don't think we have any errors and it says table created successfully. Now if it has created successfully, when we open the MySQL, um, when we open MySQL, the graphic user interface uh, on Google or whatever you've got it opened on, and when we select the cars database, we should have a table for Ford where we have an ID column, a name column and an engine size column. So let's take a look. So I'm going to go into Opera because that's where I've got PHP my admin or my SQL opened up. Refresh this page because you need to refresh. And as you see right here, marvelously, we click on cars and then um, out of nowhere, this Ford table has shown up because we've just run the query using Python. Now when I click on this Ford table, guess what? Just like I uh, asked it to, it's created an ID column, which is going to automatically increment by one each time. It's got a name column where we can type in the name of the car and then it's got an engine size column just like I asked it to. So it's all working flawlessly. Now we've also learned how to um, create a table and add fields to it. So perfect. Let's move on. So now you might be saying, hey, what if I don't want to use the GUI to actually check how many or what tables I've got going in my database? So you can do that by typing in showing. OK, I'm going to do showing tables in the database selected. Now bear in mind we're in our cars database so it's only going to show us the tables in our car database unless you want to swap it to another one. So we just do command handler dot execute. Uh, there's a uh, query called show tables which is pretty much going to show you all the tables um, in the database you're logged in which is cars for us. And then we're going to do print um, print showing all tables in the database. And then we need a for loop, like I said before, because you can't just show it all together. Whatever tables there are, are going to be returned to this um, object right here called command handler. So we're going to do a for loop. So for table and command handler. Now you can call the table anything. It's just like a variable. So I'm just going with the generic name. We need to print each table that's in the command handler that's returned. So let's run this up quickly. And OK, let's go here. As you see right here, showing all tables in the database and we have Ford because that's just the one table that we have in our database currently, um, which is the cars database. If you go ahead and add another one, like, I don't know, uh, a different brand like Volkswagen or something like that, it should show up there as well. Cool. So that's working fine as well. Now let's go ahead and do the rest of the commands. So you might be saying, hey, we've not got a table in our cars database. But how do we actually add data to it or like a row of information? So that's exactly what we're going to be doing next. So adding data into the table. So adding data into the table. Now what we need to do for this is actually first of all create a query. So we're going to have to do this separately instead of just typing in command handler dot execute. So insert into which means we're going to insert some information. Then we specify what um, database you want to insert, I mean, what table of the database you want to insert this information into, which is Ford. Um, then you need to specify what fields you want to fill in. We want to fill in name and engine size. That's the fields that we're going to be adding information to. And then we type in the keyword values, which is part of SQL. And then you in this bracket, essentially, you would add the values for name and engine size using a comma separator. But the issue is we can't really type the names of the variables in here. So we can't just go like, I don't know, hello, comma, hello, because that's just bad practice. We need to assign these as variables. So that's why we're going to be using a string converter. Uh, you need to type in uh, percentage sign S and percentage sign S. So let me explain what that's going to do. It's going to format the variable that we pass into this later 
into these fields right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna explain that in a bit. So we've got a query ready. Now we need to assign the query values. So query values equals. Uh, actually, we need this. Yeah. So query values equals. We're gonna have two brackets and then we're gonna pass in the values in here. So the first value that's gonna be stored as a name for me is going to be let's say Ford Focus because that's one of the versions that Ford has, I assume. And then we're going to say engine size is going to be 1.8 liters. So essentially what's going to happen is these values are going to be placed here and this value is going to be placed here, which is how we want it to be. So this is not yet happening. It's going to happen when you do command handler dot execute. And then we pass in first argument the query. This is usually where we'd like type in this whole line, but we need to type it in separately so that we can actually use variables to pass them through. And then we, we pass in the query and then we also need to pass in the query values. So whatever values have to be run into the query. So these values right here, query values, are going to be merged into these. So this um, percentage S is going to be replaced with forward focus and this percentage S is going to be replaced with 1.8 liters. So that all makes sense. Cool. Finally, you need to take the name of the database or the connection that you have, which is um, database one for me, and then type in dot commit, which means dot save the changes. And then print uh, command handler dot row count. So what the row count does is it returns how many rows were inserted in the last query. And then you need to say records or record inserted. So for now, it's going to say one record inserted because we're only um, inserting one record right here, which is this um, Ford Focus and 1.8 liter. Cool. So that's that for that. Let's run this and hopefully it should work in the first go. So run it up. Uh, let's pull this up. And it says one record inserted. Now we can verify this by going to our PHP My Admin right here, which I have open in uh, Opera. Let's refresh my page. And if I go to Ford, Right here, as you see, my ID is one because I don't need to enter anything in there. I can leave it empty. It will auto increment for each um, each column, each row of data that's entered. Then I have name, which is Ford Focus, which I entered using my Python script. And then I have engine size 1.8 liter, which I've also entered using my Python script. Now you might say, hey, this is a bit jarring to enter each field of information using one query each. That's a bit long. So I'm going to say there's a better method of doing it. So let's go ahead and learn how to do that. So we can actually, using this method, we can add multiple fields of data into the table. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to scroll down a bit. And this is actually going to be how to add, how to be adding multiple fields of data. So let's do that. Adding multiple fields, oops, fields of data. So we need to list our query again. So insert. Okay, actually, I'm just going to copy and paste because it's literally the same query. So let's just copy and paste this. Paste the query. And then the query values this time are going to be a bit different. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it down here. So the query values for this are going to be multiple values because as I said, we're going to be inserting multiple values this time. So we're going to need an array. So put square brackets at the end of this. So now Ford Focus comma 1.8 liter is the first item in our array. Then we need to use a comma and then we need to have another one. So I'm going to do another one for Ford Fiesta. And then I'm going to do it with a 2.0 liter engine. And let's change this Ford Focus from before to like a Mustang or something. I don't know. So that it doesn't overwrite. So I'm not sure if that's the Ford, but hey, whatever, doesn't matter for now. So Array has now got two um, two sets of data, which are going to be um, replaced in here. So whenever we run this query, it should insert these two into our database together instead of inserting one at a time. Now, like before, command handler dot execute, but this time we're going to type in many because we're executing um, many queries at one go. And then we type in the query and the query values just like last time and lastly we need to do database one dot commit so that we save all changes and then we print command handler dot row count um, comma record inserted cool let's run this up and see if it actually works 
um, and it says one record inserted for the last one that we had, which was the Ford one. And then the last test that we done was two records inserted, which means it should have worked. Let's go ahead and check. So if I run this again, as you see right here, we have Ford Focus repeating once because obviously that um, that code is still in our program, so it's still running. But we have Mustang and Ford Fiesta and 1.8 liter and 2.0 liters showing up all together. So that query worked. We were able to add multiple values in one go. Cool. So that's how you do that. Let's close this off. Now we still have a few more things to go through before we actually end this tutorial. So there's quite a bit you're learning from this. So I hope you find value in this tutorial. So let's say you wanted to find out what records are there in your table without actually having to open up your GUI each time. This is going to be how to display all records from a selected table. So you can use a uh, MySQL query actually to do this. So command handler dot execute and the query for this is select star from whatever table you want to select it from. So select star means select everything from I'm going to go with Ford because that's the only table we have in our cars database at the moment. So select star from Ford and then I'm going to do records equals command handler dot fetch all. So we're telling the um, command handler, which is this query right here, when it's executed, we want to fetch all the results that we get from this forward table and then save that into a variable called records. Now we need to loop through this to actually find out what records are in there. So just playing records, oops, spazzed out. And then for record in records, we're going to print record. Cool. Let's run this up quickly to see if that works. And as you see, it flawlessly works. Displaying records and it has all the records that are currently stored in our Ford table of our cars database. So this bit right here. Cool. So we have successfully managed to pull out data from our table that we've selected. Now, what if you wanted to pick only specific columns of this table? So what if you wanted to find out only the name or only the engine size? from this table and not everything. You can still do that, which is going to be the last command for this tutorial. Hey, finally comes to an end, right? So displaying specific columns um, of columns from the table selected. So we need to command handler again, because command handler is what we use to make any queries dot execute and then in there we type in the query which is going to be select name from ford so now if you remember in the last query we said select star which means select everything from ford but this time we're being more specific we're saying select only the column called name from the table ford now this is only going to return the names of the different cars that we have under the ford table which is what we want so records again oops, records is going to be overwritten by command handler dot fetch all because we need to fetch all the records now we print displaying um, names from table forward and then we're gonna do a for loop again for record and reports now as i said before the record variable could be changed to whatever you like i'm just calling it record to keep it specific and lastly we print the report for each record we have so let's run this up and if i see right here as, I see, as you see, it says displaying names from table forward and we only have the names of the cars. We have no longer got the um, engine size. Whereas in the previous query where we said uh, where we were displaying everything from a table, it literally says the ID, the name and the engine size. But now we've specifically said we only want the name. Now, likewise, if you wanted to find out just the um, engine size, you could change select name to select engine size. And if I run that, it should only show me engine sizes now, right? Like it's showing me right here. So it's pretty simple how we work with this uh, MySQL library. It might sound a bit hard in the start, but trust me, guys, you can rewatch this tutorial or go through the source code and keep practicing and you get used to it like it's nothing. So sorry that the tutorial is so long, but I'm pretty sure that you've learned a lot through this and you might find value through it. Um, thank you guys for all the support that you guys have been showing me recently. I am very grateful to you guys. And 
If you like, if you would like to support my channel, you can do so by um, becoming a patron and signing up using my Patreon page, which is going to be on my description on all my channel tags. You can also consider joining my Discord channel where we discuss different ideas for videos, meet new people and just have a lot of fun. Also consider following my so following up my socials and sharing this video to try to help my um, channel grow because I'm trying to do that at the moment. If you could share, it would be amazing. And guys, I will see your beautiful faces in the part two of this tutorial. Peace.